for those of you that have been following my channel for a while, uh, you may remember that we had created this Twitter header animation using React Native Animated. In this video, we'll change Animated to use React Native Reanimated and we'll also compare the performance of both of them. As you can see here, I've got the original app running and I'll post a link in the description of my earlier project which you can clone and follow along with me. So the main issue that we were getting earlier when we were working with the animated was that this animation would break down on old Android devices. Also, when the JavaScript thread was blocked, the animation would stutter. As of now, I'm testing out this animation on a fairly low level Android device and let's see if it works. So if you scroll up, we notice that the animation is working fairly smoothly and we scroll back down, it works as expected. However, right now there's no load on our JavaScript thread. Let's go ahead and simulate blocking our JavaScript thread. So here in our componented mount, I'll just run a for loop every 200 milliseconds and then we'll see the JavaScript frames drop. As you can see, the JavaScript frames have dropped and now let's test out the animation. Now when we scroll up, we notice that the animation is not working at all. This is where reanimated will help us out. To actually see what's happening, we'll be installing a library to see how many times we cross the React Native bridge to actually update the view. So for now, I'm just going to get rid of this set interval and save this out. And we'll go ahead and install a dependency which is called React Native Snoopy. So here, we can install it by using this code. We'll use yarn instead. So let's open up our editor and in our terminal, Let's add yarn add rn dash snoopy. Once that's installed, let's head back to the documentation. And here, just copy this code out. And let's paste it here on the top. Here, all we're interested in is filter. So get rid of bars and also buffer. Come back to the documentation. And since we're only interested in certain logs, we'll use this filter method. So let's copy that out. And below events, just paste that in. So basically Snoopy will help us spy on our React Native bridge and see how many times it's crossed over. What we're interested in is only a specific method, which in fact is not create view, but update view. This will show us how many times we cross the bridge to update the view. Now let's save that out. I'm using Expo here, so I can just open up my terminal. And now let's try and test the app out. As we scroll, we notice that this JS to native is a call that's crossing the bridge. And for every part of the scroll, we see that it crosses the bridge and sends over the values to be updated. This is the reason why when we block the JavaScript thread, it's unable to send across all the values. When we use React Native Reanimated, we'd reduce crossing the bridge to the minimum so that our animation can still work. So for now, let's just comment out the code we had pasted in. And once we change our app over to reanimated, which should be fairly easy, we'll try and test this out again. So first things first, instead of importing animated from React Native, let's import that in from React Native reanimated. So we'll say import. Since I'm using Expo, you don't have to go ahead and install this dependency separately, and it's part of the basic Expo project. Next, let's come down here, in our constructor, instead of putting this scroll y on the state, let's change that up and just set this dot scroll y equal to a new animated dot value. When you're using reanimated, you're usually accessing quite a lot of the properties, so it makes sense to just extract them out by destructuring them. See so here, let's say const value is equal to animated. Then we can directly just pass in value here. Next, come down here and get rid of this dot state dot scroll y and replace it with this dot scroll y. So I'm just going to select all the values and pass in this dot scroll y. In reanimated, we can't directly pass in this clamp value. We actually need to import something known as extrapolate from animated. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll again destructure it. And here, let's just select all the clamp values and replace it with extrapolate dot clamp. Also, we were interpolating everything inside our render method. Let's just move this out to our constructor method. So I'm just going to copy all of these. 
and put them below our scroll by value. Now since we want to access it in our app, we can't use it as constant. So I'm just going to change it to a property of the class. Again, let's just select the header height and make it this dot header height. And I'll do the same for the rest of the constants. Also, now that we're using animated from React Native reanimated, we need to make sure that our scroll view is also an animated dot scroll view. So here, let's pass an animated and let's also change the closing tag. And I think we're more or less done. Let's test out the app. And it seems to be working perfectly. Let's now go ahead and block the JavaScript thread. Again, in our componented mount, I'll just uncomment this code. We see our frames have dropped. And now let's try and run the animation. As you can notice, the animation seems to be working perfectly. Let's come back up here to Snoopy. And let's uncomment this out. Save that. Open up our terminal. Now let's see what gets logged out when we run the animation. As you can see, we're not seeing any values being logged out here because there's no constant crossing of the JavaScript bridge. During this animation, some of you may have noticed that there's this shadow that appears when the image goes below the header. This is something specific to Android. I'm just going to try and go ahead and fix that. See here when we come down, in our first animated dot view, which is our header, we're passing in the Z index value, which at the time only worked with iOS. That's why we had to use this value called elevation. But now we don't need this. So let's get rid of this. And instead, to our parent view, let's pass in this property called shadow color and set that to white. Now if we test this out, you'll notice the animation works perfectly and we don't get that flickering due to change in background color. As always, I hope you guys like this and try this out. And thank you for watching.